good? Awesome. I greet the church in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This feels like such a strange thing to say, given the times we are living in. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I get anxious. I'm thinking, you know, we, I believe we are like uh, clicking our data or our Wi-Fi on away from hearing Ruthie so-and-so has contracted the virus. It's bad times. It's bad, bad times. So to say, I greet you in the wonderful name. It's like wonderful. Kanjani. When at first it was statistics from China, a America, and then it became colleagues and friends and family. It's difficult. But in the chaos, the character of God doesn't change. In... In, 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 in our lamenting, his love doesn't change. You know, gut-wrenching moments, God himself does not change. So it's okay for me to greet the hard-pressed church that is not crushed. The perplexed church that is not in despair. The persecuted church that is not abandoned. The struck-down church that is not destroyed. In the wonderful, unchanging name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. So it's on this premise here that I start and share what what God put in my heart about His tithe and offering. I was raised by my mom. We were not rich at all, so my mom taught us one thing: when you get simali, hundred rand, ten percent is for tithe, ten percent is for offering. I so that's what I knew. 10% tithe, 10% offering. 80 rand am. It was fine until 100 rand became a thousand rand. Whoa. Whoa. 800. Because I need to be know when we have little, we have little responsibility. But when we have more, no responsibility na yo yanda. I cash up, I was faithful. 10%, 10%. Until a thousand rand became ten thousand yati aita. I think u five percent offering ungaba rights. How many of us know? But sometimes we negotiate with scripture and us understand. We say, Lord, did you really mean ten percent or no five? You know, if a thou, if if a cattle on a thousand hills are yours, who ten percent? I'm doing you five of our rights. And I was negotiating with God. Okay, it's like 10% there because I'm full of giving. But 10% the money offering, it is me saying, I touch a church. So that's okay. Mama, 10,000, so I'm ningi, and then I'm in my responsibility. I'm a ning. 5% offering. I shop. Malgan kulukulu ea kemos. 5% I can give to the church. Let the lights go on. Suppose a man, you see a toilet, see no gula, that is fine. Until God said to me, Bumi, I, I can do so much more. Wait, let me let me remember it correctly. I can do so much more with the 15% than you can do with the hundred percent pele. And I was like, oh. It humbled me. It humbled me. And I thought back to scripture about a time where God did so much with so little. There was a, a crowd. And you see, in London, this is in John chapter 6. A crowd was following him. They wanted to hear what he has to say. They wanted to be healed. And what Jesus says to, the, to his disciples, these people have walked a long distance. We can't turn them back. In fact, I want to read it because there are certain things I want us to pick out. This is John chapter 6, verse, um, verse 5. When Jesus found out where, when the people rather found out where Jesus was, they came to see him and soon a very large crowd had gathered. Jesus turned to Philip and said, these people have come a long way and will soon be hungry. Where can we get some food to feed them? Listen to verse 6. Jesus asked Philip this question to test his faith. He already knew how he was going to feed the people. He already knew how he was going to feed the people. So he says, 
do we have any food? And, and Andrew says, no, I saw this boy who's got five loaves and two fish. And Jesus says, bring it here. Bring it here. But they say something so interesting to him. We'll see, not even 200 days wage will be able to feed these people sufficiently. This is what they say to him. And he says, bring it here. He gets the five loaves. He gets the two fish. And he gives thanks. What happened here? In the hands of Andrew, in the hands of the little boy, in the hands of Philip, five loaves and two fish could never feed 5,000 men and their wives and their children until there was an exchange of hands. Until there was an exchange of hands, five loaves fed 5,000 men with their wives, with their children because there was an exchange of hands. Mbomi, I can do so much more with 15% than you can do with the entire 100%. And so today, I'm saying Jesus already knows how he's going to feed you. He already knows how you're going to pay for all the things that demand your attention and your finances. He already knows. Exchange of hands. Give him the 10%. It is his. But also, give him the 5. Give him the 6. Give him the 10. Because he already knows what what you are thinking about. He already knows. Let your money exchange hands and see what God does with your five loaves and your two fish. Let's close our eyes and pray. Our good and gracious heavenly father, Lord, we want to start on a clean slate. We have negotiated and tried to wiggle our way around 10% that is yours. We've even negotiated our 5%, our 6%, but you already know how you are going to provide for us. You know, dear God, Woodsy, you are going to feed us. You are going to clothe us. You are going to send children to school. You are going to pay for our debt. You will do all these things, dear God. All we have to do is take our five loaves and our two fish and hand them over to you. Because you can do so much more with 10%. You can do so much more with the little offering that we give than we can do with the entire amount. And so, dear God, forgive us. Forgive us for relying on our bank accounts more than we rely on you. Forgive us, dear God, for being like Adam and Eve who thought that a bite of the forbidden fruits will expose them to more than obedience will. We want to obey you. We don't want to bite into the 10% that is yours. We don't want to bite into the offering that is for the church to run functionally. We want to obey. We want to trust We want to have faith that you can do so much more with the little that we give to you, the little that we are faithful to you, Gazo, than we can do with the entire 100%. And so, Lord, bless us. Because when you bless us, we will be able to give. Sometimes we make the excuse to say we don't have. That's why we don't give. But in actual fact, we don't give. And that's why we do not have. So help us, dear God, to be obedient. Help us, dear God, to be generous. Help us, dear God, to give. Because when that happens, you say we should test you and see if you will not open the floodgates of heaven. So we don't even have enough to, to, to contain. Dear God, and my disciples even took home umpago from the five loaves and the two fish. We want to walk around at the end of the month with umpago because we gave you 10%. With umpago because we gave the church some money to run. Give us umpago, dear God, but we won't have umpago if we don't give you our five loaves and our two fish. Help us, dear God, to realize that you don't need this money. You just need our faith. And when we have faith, you do so much more than our, our own minds can fathom and imagine. We love you. We love you because you forgive. We love you because you remind us. And today, thank you for this reminder. And I know, Gusi, from this day onwards, we will be carrying umpago everywhere so we can generously give to more and more people. We love you, dear God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.